Don here in Florida and I'm back with some more motorcycle fun repairs. Uh, a few weeks back, I guess it was a month back now, I did a uh, video on repairing a head on a Yamaha, uh, I forgot what it was, Roadstar I guess, 1700. And when I was doing that video I found other problems with that head and also the exhaust system of that bike on the front head. And I kept bugging the front office to let me uh, fix the exhaust and the owner didn't want me touching the exhaust. He didn't want me to do anything with that. He just wanted the leaks on that bike fixed and that was that. And uh, I'd actually picked up behind another guy on this job so, <clears throat> you know, I wasn't in the full. But uh, I, I complained about it and, you know, said we need to do a good repair on that before it goes out and of course it didn't. The uh, owner took it. He said he could fix the exhaust and it was gone for a few weeks and then all of a sudden it showed back up in the shop. In this case the owner had gone to make the repairs himself, um, decided the stud positions weren't right and I don't know what, he needed to helicoil things and that wasn't the answer and he drilled out the head and uh, made some errors. I'm going to see if I can get a picture up here. Um, I don't know if you can see in this picture. He actually over drilled a stud hole that wasn't even supposed to be there and popped a hole through the side of the casting. Um, the owner before this guy it obviously had problems he, as he filled in the original holes on the head and re-drilled some holes and they didn't align and basically we ended up with a whole bunch of mismatched things and he had bent flanges and I don't know it, it turned into a nightmare and he sold the bike to this guy so uh, now I'm kind of tasked with trying to come up with a way to fix this so like I said at the beginning the guy on this bike wanted to do everything on the cheap he'd already had too much money into it uh, head replacement wasn't an option uh, pulling the head just the time consumed in doing that to uh, properly uh, TIG weld in all the aluminum and, and reset everything and redrill and retap wasn't an option so we're coming up with my own little option. On, uh, so let me show you on the whiteboard here what's going on. And so in the pictures it's kind of hard to see but this is the exhaust port here and the original area comes off the head like this that's the head itself and there's supposed to be a flange hole here and a flange hole here and what happened is the previous owner for whatever reason filled in this flange hole made a, a new flange hole here and then made another flange hole here <clears throat> this is the flange hole that got over drilled by the guy and popped a hole through the casting um, really the alignment that that either one of these guys did wasn't correct to get a, a perfect alignment the, the hole should have been here so what we're gonna do because I can't fill this in I can't take this on the bike or this because then I'd have to mill it and drill it and it's it's just stuff you want to do on the mill what we're gonna do is we're going to fill in this hole to give us support because this is a hole right here and the area between these two holes now because he drilled this out to 10 millimeter is much too large and there's no support over this hole right here so what I did was I made up this aluminum plug that's going to go in right here and it's going to fit basically fill in that hole right there we're going to put some aluminum weld in there to make we're going to put some aluminum weld in there to make sure it stays secure and that'll that'll go flush against the head so what we're left with is this hole here which is still a pretty decent hole it's been heli coiled this heli coil job compared to that one was actually pretty decent so we're going to leave that heli coil in and we're going to build or we're going to make a stud that goes in here so it'll go in like this and then it'll offset like this so we're making an offset stud so we want to come out and align at this point right here so and I, I know this is messy we want it to come out in the line right here now when you screw this 
stud in, obviously you don't know it at what position it's going to come out. So luckily because this is metrics and we know it's a, a 1.25, what we'll do is we'll make a series of washers, all of different thicknesses based on the 0.25. So we'll make a, we're, we're actually gonna stay with the 125 because we don't want it too thin, we don't want shims. So we'll make a 125 and a 150, 175, and uh, maybe a, a 2.0 shim and that way when we screw the stud in if say it, it lines up here at this position this part here we know that it's screwed in too far uh, we can back that back by adding a shim so in this case we could we could put in a 150 and when we screwed it back in it should come out right about where we want it and we'll do these out of aluminum so there's a little squish area there so when we bring it in we can kind of socket right to where we want it and uh, so this is where we're headed so to make this stud because we know that we need and this is a 300 thousandths i've already measured it it's going to be a 300 thousandths offset if we drilled in the mid if we started in the middle here made our shaft this way and offset 300 thousandths we basically need a one inch uh, diameter to start with uh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to burn up more material than I have to. Plus, the way I'm going to do it, it's not going to matter. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with uh, 5 8 which is, what, 625. And we'll offset it. We'll, we'll get our first part of the stud here, which will be on one side here. And then we're going to have a spacer come out here. Uh, this is we're going to make some flats on that so we have something to screw that stud in and tighten it nicely and then the other side will come out here so we'll have that side and that side done so to do this we're going to actually hook it up in the call up block like this and put it in the four jaw chuck turn one side then we're going to turn it around and do the other and now you're thinking, well, you're going to lose your position, this and that. You won't be 300 that Well, we, we will. We will. We're going to take the shaft like this. And we're going to mark it. And this isn't marked to the center. It doesn't have to be in the center. As a matter of fact, it's better if it's a little bit lower so that we know which side's up and down. Okay. I don't know if we can see that too well. I can see it here. Okay, so we're going to put the collet block in like this, just snugged up, and uh, I think I'll do the long side first, so right now, okay, before we do anything, let's try to find our zero point here, it doesn't look too bad actually. Okay, that, that's good enough because we're going to move it over 300 thousandths here in just a second. So that's how it is all the way around. So let's do that now. Okay, so I set up with this dial indicator so I can look straight down on it. I've got this squared with the chuck locked here on the spindle. It's not moving. I got my line square across like this with the line at the lower edge. So when I flip it around, I know I have to be on the lower edge still. Uh, this is locked in, shouldn't go anywhere. Okay, that was try two. I don't know what I was thinking with 300,000, it's 150 minus the 12th for, 12 for the uh, size of this because I, I just remembered that uh, we're going metric on the stud size, not SAE. So it would have been 150 minus 12, so that's 140, uh, 138. So now I got it set. So let's press on guys. Sunday morning coming down, I put on my cleanest dirty shirt. So uh, this is probably gonna shake, rattle, and roll a little bit, so bear with us. And we're gonna start it slow, just to see what we got. And we'll put our center here. Oh, 
Okay, so bring the high side over here so I don't slam that when we start. Okay, and I got a mark right here so I know about how far to go. Maybe I ought to run this automatic, huh? Do it right there. And that may look like an awful long stud, and yes it is. Um, I'm making it long on, pur long on purpose. Okay, so my battery died while I was running the die down on there, but I guess you've all seen how to do that before. Uh, notice I didn't have to bring the threads all the way down fl flush here because there is a gap here to where the flange comes up on this point right here. So the flange probably won't come down any further than this right here. So I, I really don't need the threads but up in here. So clean those up a little bit with a, with a file. Um, <clears throat> right now, because also at the same time my screws on the bottom of my GoPro broke out, we'll go ahead and just set it right there. And we're going to line up our mark here like this. <clears throat> we want that straight up and down. Okay. And I'm going to lock that. <clears throat> and I don't have to. I don't have to take this out. All I have to do is, is loosen this like this and pull this out and. See my line right there, I want to keep it in the same position that I had it when, it when I brought it out. So this came out like this. So the line goes up like that. And I want it, I'm only going to take a little bit off this uh, right to that point there. So I only need to bring it into here. So make sure I have myself a little space here to work with. And make sure that that's perpendicular. And we'll, we'll double check that with the tool. And I want to find the high spot here so I don't smash this. There we go. Let's try it. just like that so that'll go into the head right there like that and we'll have this standoff right here which will give it some strength the stud we're probably only going to use about that much if that so all these threads are excess once I have the nut adjusted where I want it and I'll just chop it off that's about it do is I'm going to zero this cutoff tool on my DRO beep beep it doesn't have beeps and I got to change it over to metric here so let me metric metric okay and we said we're going to go, go 125 plus 25 so that's 150 
and then I'll, I'll mark these one dot for the thinnest two for the next thinnest one two and then three for the next fattest I, I said thinnest I meant fattest and then one two three four for that one that way I know which one's thinner and which one's thicker so I know which way to go when I go to uh, set that up okay so I guess that's gonna just about cover our offset uh, stud here I, I put a little square on here so they can get on there with a wrench I got the uh, spacer washers to get it at the right angle when I put it on I found some other washers in there when I was looking for a, a nut because uh, he didn't have a nut on there basically because he didn't have a stud in there anymore and I found these uh, nice little castle nuts and I cleaned these up on the polisher I figured I'd just uh, cap those stud ends with them make it look nice so there's our offset stud I'm gonna go put it in the bike show you what that looks like I'll probably just have to take some pictures of that we got our, our filler uh, aluminum here to uh, close up that hole so take a look at the pictures and uh, let's see what happens